Greetings friends, it's Alexor again, and today we are actually here with my first ever Diablo 4 build. Time to prepare that. And I gotta give this a disclaimer right away, this is not the strongest build there is. Um, you know me, I do crazy and fun builds that are fun to play, all like different. Um, I don't plan them to even run to pit 100 or whatever, this is pit 20. I need more pit 20. And, I mean, it's dealing with it just fine, right? Nothing crazy. But it can't really do the high-end content. It can do most content, not the high-end content. So I just want to make this clear so you guys know. Need more time. I'm not even going to finish this pit or whatever, just so you have an idea of what's going on. So what does this build do? It's the Blue Ball Sorcerer build. That is only for men. Women can't play this build, obviously, because they can't have blue balls. You see all the blue balls around. And we, we're going to build blue balls, and then we're going to nut. We want him to nut. That's, that's the idea. So basically what this does is, through all our lightning skills, it, we create a lot of the crackling energy. That's what it's literally called, the blue balls. When we pick them up, we gain mana, but we also have a chance to create a lightning spear from that. So the idea is, just by picking them up, we create so many lightning spear conjurations. As you can tell, they're all jumping around here. That... Yeah, the screen is pretty much filled with lightning conjurations. It also uses the chain lightning on top with the actual conduit for extra damage. But the main idea is the blue balls. So we have, have, definitely want to have the three evade charges on the boots to be able to jump around and pick them up, as well as teleport. Otherwise, you can't really pick them up in big fights. Now this bit is exceptionally good at farming big mobs because the more enemies, the more bounces you get from the chain lightning, which is by the way also cast whenever you crit. So the more people, the more damage you do. That means at the same time it's worse against bosses, so bossing this is not as strong. Um, so uh, I did, I think, pit. 30 or 40 just fine on the minions, but I couldn't kill the boss, so... But this is however because I'm lacking an item. And I killed Zeal like 20 times, I could not drop the fucking item. I wanted to make a build guide anyway because I'm gonna switch to something else now. But in case you guys wanna play it, if not, that's also fine. But this is sort of the disclaimers for this build, right? And the item in question is not this, the Lockrins Talisman. What we actually want is Azadora's... The Amulet from Azadora. What's it called? I can't remember the name. Hold up. There it is. Azadora's Overflowing Cameo. That's the name of it. As you see, it gives us 25% resistance to all elements. Movement speed for 4 seconds after picking up Crackling Energy. That's great to run around also and pick all them up. Damage reduction per Crackling Energy charge. Great. Intelligence and Crackling Energy damage. 500%. That's insane. And upon collecting Crackling Energy, there's a 50% chance to release a Lightning Nova dealing X Lightning damage. Increased by 60% for every 100 intelligence you have. So basically, what you do is, once you have the Azadora's overflowing, overflowing Cameo, you create your blue balls and then you nut them off all the time very hard so they explode and deal a lot of damage that way. That's the idea of the build. Actually, let's go into the skills first. So we use Spark over here. I tried it first with Arc Lash, but that kind of sucks. Spark is just better because you can do it from range. Also, because the great thing of this is, uh, modifiers from the flickering spark is, each time spark hits an enemy, it has a 4% chance to form a crackling energy. So even more crackling energy. Obviously, gen lighting, you don't even need to max out the damage, because we don't care. Um, gen lighting gains... Wait, where is it? Uh, yeah, when it critically strikes, also our crit damage and crit strike is pretty high then, it has a 30% chance to form a crackling energy again. And... Oh, that's chain lighting. Never mind, it's not even the, the spear. And chain lighting forms automatically after spending 83 mana. So we also want this to create even more crackling energy. Very simple, that's the chain lighting. I don't have anything else here? Nope. Then we have teleport, obviously, ice armor for mana regen. This is what we want. This is really just one for the mana regen. It also gives us more damage when we have barrier active, but that comes later. Glass cannon classic and elemental attunement. Uh, crit strikes have chance to reset cooldown because we want to really have our cooldowns available all the time. Or off all the time. And there's a lightning spear. There it is. 
Absorbing crackling energy, that's the enchantment effect, right? It has 12% chance to conjure a lightning spear. So that's the key thing we want from this. Casting lightning spears once additional spear and crackling energy increases the damage of your next lightning spear by 20% up to 160. So cracking energy again. This is all with the blue balls, right? It's all focused on the blue balls and sort of automatically doing the damage while we just run around and collect them. Like a hit chance increased. We need this a lot also. And because there it is, the lucky hit. Any crit with a shock skill has an 80% chance to form crackling energy. So any sort of lucky hit increase also helps us to create more crackling energy. That's what we want the most. And this also, no, where it is? Oh yeah, anytime we stun, we also do damage to them. Actually quite a lot, lightning damage. And down here, no, where is it? Uh, it's this one, right? Yeah. Lucky hit, that's why we increase lucky hit a lot. Lucky hit, shock skills have up to a 35% chance to stun enemies for three seconds. Very, very powerful, very, very powerful. Because what you saw there is all of them, the, like the whole crowd, they were all stunned at the same time and pretty much in a perma stun all the time because 35% is quite a lot and we do this a lot. Our lucky hit is pretty high uh, for the lightning spear as well. So there's just a lot of um, stun happening all the time. Obviously, we need the unstable currents because uh, while it is active, you pulse crackling energy for free at 25% faster rate. That's from these, so we create even more of that. And we also have a crit chance, increased shocks. Yeah, crit chance. So basically what you want to do is you want to have your lucky hit chance up. You want to have a decent crit chance and then focus on crit damage later because that scales your damage pretty nicely. And of course, stun um, with this. Convulsions. You can also increase this with items. As you see, I did this with two item points here. Um, you can go even higher, so it's like a 50% chance if you get the real rolls. But I focused more on lucky hit chance here to make sure um, it actually procs. For the Paragon, it's actually very, whoops, very simple. We want to have at first the um, Territorial in our base one, because damage reduction, damage reduction against close enemies very powerful, because the Sorcerer is still very squishy, squishy obviously. Then in the second board, this one, conjuration skills have 20% increased duration because the lightning spear is actually a conjuration. It's just a lightning flying around, but it is a conjuration. It's basically a, like a minion. So this makes them last longer, which is always great. Also, um, conjuration skills gain increased damage. Very useful as well. We're going to get our conjuration damage, no, damage notes here as well. Electro and the in, incapacitate, more conjuration damage, so all the damage. And then over here, we throw in the elementalist because Fire, cold, or lightning damage. When enemy increase all damage you deal to them by 5% for 10 seconds. Plus more lightning damage. Very useful again. We don't even take any legendary notes from these. Uh, important legendary notes are, notes are this one, for example. Elemental Summoner. Your conjuration skills have 10% and reduce cooldown or mana cost. Very powerful. Bonus damage. A total amount of your bonus damage with um, lightning and cold up to 60. Now it's at 49. And here we go with the destruction because crit strikes increase all damage the enemy takes from you up to 12. So that's also very, very strong. Um, and more increased critical strike damage, basically. Over here we have this node. That's a very good one, by the way. You get to it very late, but it's very powerful. Enchantments are 20% stronger. That just means a lot more uh, lightning spears are created. A lot of them are actually, a lot, like a lot more are created. And over here we go with the Tactician because we deal 10% increased damage for 4 seconds after casting a defensive skill. We pretty much want our Ice Barrier to be active all the time because we gain a lot of mana region if it's active. We gain more damage and we also gain more damage when Barrier is active on the items. So we definitely disactive most of the time. And then in the last one we have Invocation, which I haven't even maxed out yet. Enemies damaged by your conjuration skills deal 1% reduce damage to you. That's just for survivability and then down here also for... And we go into decks to make it happen. One more into decks, yeah. But the build planner is going to have all of it, of course. What we need is definitely the actual conduit, classic, because chain lightning alternates between orbiting you and seeking up to three enemies. When it returns, it drains six mana from you for each active chain lightning. 
And after 66, it explodes for 8,000 damage, which is actually a bad roll here in my case. Like a very bad roll. If you have a better one, congratulations, I didn't. But it also has a chance for Chain Lighting to cast twice, damage reduction, resource generation, etc. So this is just overall very good. Again, you really need the Asadoras. I said he didn't get it, um, so this is a nice substitution. Because you get crit chance bonus and you get crit damage, but um, the Asadoras is, is much better because you want to focus on the blue balls. If you have it, throw it in. You can also go with the Flicker Stab boots if you want. Actually, I have it here, I believe. Yep, these ones. I can't see it. No, wait. There you go. Flicker Stab boots because um, each enemy you evade through reduces your active ultimate cooldown by four seconds. That's cool, even though it's available most of the time anyway. But we gain more movement speed, damage reduction from close, and ultimate damage. And also, attacks reduce evades cooldown by 2.5 seconds, and evade grants movement speed. So basically, the main thing this these boots have is just jumping around, zooming around and picking up all the, the blue balls you create. That's the main idea of these, if you have them. Everything else, I went, as you can tell here, with shock crit damage, lightning spear cast um, twice, for example, or lightning spear lucky hit chance. Base, just base lucky hit chance is generally better, but I just got this. If you just get a lucky hit chance increased, that is better, although the lightning spear I think has a higher roll. So yeah, and you're also going to cast a lot of lightning spears, so it doesn't really matter. You just want to increase lucky hit chance as much as possible. Um, plus two convul convulsions. I did this here, as I said, because that helps me. In skill tree, where is it? Convulsions were here, I believe. Yeah, to have to stun up. Right. You want to have more stun. So if you want, you can also throw more into the convulsions. Um, so you have a much higher stun chance. That's up to you. Both works just fine. Lightning spear lucky hit again, total armor. Uh, lightning spear lucky hit, total armor. You get the idea. Over here we have shock crit damage again and 40% chance to deal lightning damage. This is not the craziest, but it's good enough. I'm actually going to go over the aspects in a second as well. Unstable Currents cooldown reduction, you want to have this at least once, and once is enough. You want to have this once in your in your items. So your ultimate cooldown is pretty much... You know, your ultimate is pretty much available all the time whenever you do shock skills. Um, this also happens from an aspect, I believe. So the ultimate is pretty much available all the time so we can create more blue balls. Shock crit chance in this case, so we actually have a higher chance. And crit chance again, resource generation, shock crit damage. And yeah, this one. So for the aspects. This one is very useful. It's just more of a utility thing. Casting Ice Armor makes you unstoppable. Um, it just basically makes us tankier and it's very important because we die fast. That's a soul sword, pretty much. Um, when you hit a crowd controlled enemy, there is up to 50% chance for that crowd control effect to spread. This is great because we do throw out a lot of stun chance. And then we have even. On top of that, a 50% chance to spread it even further. And this is why you see all these mobs being stunned all the time. 10% chance to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate skill by 2 seconds. Can only happen once per skill cast. So, anytime you cast a skill as a sorcerer, you have a 10% chance it reduces the ultimate skill cooldown by 2 seconds. So I had it happen to me, I was casting so much Chain Lightning and Lightning Spear and all that all the time, that... Um, my ultimate was actually off cooldown before its duration ran out. <laughs> so I saw that it was off cooldown, but I couldn't click it because it was still active. That happens sometimes. Pretty nice. Lucky hit chance is increased by 24% while you have barrier. Again, lucky hit chance. Very powerful. Chain lightning has a chance to chain 5 additional times. Nice. It's sort of the nice mixture addition. Because just as chain lightning... No, not chain lightning. Just a lightning spear alone. It's nice, but the Chain Lightning with these pants gave this build a real push in doing more damage, so I really enjoyed that. And Chain Lightning has a chance to deal 7500 increased damage, double against bosses or crowd control enemies, also pretty good. Cracking Energy has a chance to deal 5% increased damage, and Chain to an additional enemy, that's great, so you create even more. And you gain uh, of your primary resource for every 20% of your life that you heal. That's a nice gimmick because, as you can tell, we have life on hit. On these implicit, I think also on the weapon. Yeah, 33 life on hit. And we do a lot of hits, obviously, right, with our lightning. And then we gain life from that. Pretty 
Pretty powerful. Um, for the gems, it's obvious. In the weapons, we have the crit damage, and everything else is health or armor. Except for this one diamond, so we gain more resistances, so we have them capped. Of course, we want to have this capped. Very, very simple. Now, I thought it would actually kick me out, but whatever. Um, one more thing I keep forgetting. Elixir. You, you should reuse this one. Elixir for advantage 2. Attack speed is irrelevant, but lucky hit by 15%. That gives our lucky hit up again a lot when we are fighting. So make sure you have this activated. That really buffs your creation of these chain lightnings and the... Um, keep forgetting the name. Lightning spear a lot again. So how you play this, as I said, very simple. You cast... You want, you want to cast your ice armor pretty much all the time. You want to have this active. It gives you all the buffs. Lucky chance now is 8%, for example. Then you activate the ultimate right after that. And then you can just keep left-clicking the enemy while running around. The spark creates the crackling energy, so you want to do this as much as possible. But you also, in between, cast your chain lightning and your lightning spear. It's an 18 second cooldown, so that's fine. See, these, these are the, the things. And you can just left-click and keep casting the chain lightning in between also all the time. That is totally fine. But most of it is left-click on enemies and then these two. You're gonna use all your skills pretty much all the time, so it's a very active build to play, okay? Whenever they are off cooldown, you keep firing them, right? Like the, the ultimate, the ice armor. Just keep throwing them in, because ice armor again also gives you mana regen, you wanna have this, because for this, for example, to trigger, right? And in the middle it says, um, after draining 66 total mana, the bolt explodes for 8,000 damage, so you get this extra damage, but this of course only works if it can drain that mana, if you're sitting on zero mana and the chain lightning eats your mana fast, um, then it doesn't 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 proc. So um, you want to make sure that your mana is up all the time. All right. I don't think I forgot anything. I hope not. If you have any questions, ask them below. As I get, as I said again, this is not the most overpowered build there is. It can do some good early tiers of the pit or even most bosses. Um, I don't think you can do the Lilith unless you uh, have this amulet. Without it, it's going to be very tough. And if you have the Shaco, for example, like the Harlequin's Crest, that makes it much better. Then you can actually also tank most bigger bosses. So if you have some Mythics lying around that make you tankier, you can also go with this. But it was a lot of fun. I was playing this since level 60 or something, up to 100 was a lot of fun leveling this uh, to that level with this build. So it's, it's a great, fun build. Again, it's not the most overpowered build, it's a fun build. Just so you guys don't get triggered. Anyway, i see you guys next video. And until then, have a good time.